Hello students, in this video we'll prove Schur's lemma about n by n matrices in upper triangular similarity. This is Schur's lemma. It states that if A is an n by n matrix with complex entries, then there is an upper triangular matrix T and unitary matrix U such that such that A is equal to U T U complex conjugate conjugate transpose. Of course that's since U is unitary, this is A T U inverse. Okay? So that's Schur's lemma. Now, in other words, what this says, this says that any n by n matrix is unitarily equivalent to a upper triangular matrix. And this is going to give us a lot of room to apply this in applications. Okay? And so now what we'll do is this. And markers over here. So now we'll prove this. And the proof is by induction on n. Okay? Well, let's do a simple case first. Let's look at n equals 2. That's the base case. So let's let lambda be an eigenvalue. with unit eigenvector u hat. Okay? That means, of course, that a of u hat, a of u hat is equal to lambda u hat by the definition of eigenvalue eigenvector. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to let v hat be any vector, any unit vector, of course, since there's a hat there such that the inner product with u hat and v hat is equal to zero, okay? Then we set, we let u be the vector u hat v hat, okay? And now let's look at a applied to u. So of course, this matrix u is now a unitary matrix. This is a unitary matrix, okay? And what can we say? We can say, therefore, that a of u, a applied to u, is going to be u, and then what? And then lambda, something, I don't know what that is, a zero down over here, and then something else, right? And so what this tells me, of course, those stars are just one-dimensional things, right? So this tells me that a is equal to u, and then lambda, some number, zero. I'm going to call that lambda, uh, st lambda star, because that's another eigenvalue, because these things are similar to each other, they have the same spectrum, and then u conjugate transpose, that's the inverse. And that proves in the case when n is equal to 2. Okay. And so we're going to figure out how to get it from n minus 1 to n, right? So let's suppose the theorem is true for uh, matrices of dimension n minus 1. So suppose true for n minus 1 by n minus 1 matrices. Okay? And we'll do the same sort of idea, right? We'll let u hat be an eigenvector, a unit eigenvector with eigenvalue lambda. Okay, excellent. Then that tells me that A applied to u hat is lambda u hat. And then I'm going to use this idea over here. What I did over here is I basically chose V to complete the orthogonal complement of the space C2. I'm going to extend just a single vector u hat, this set, to an orthonormal basis, orthonormal basis of Cn. And if we do that, we get u hat, phi 1 hat, and we get n minus 1 new things. Okay. And let me let the u1 be the matrix u hat, phi 1 hat, phi n minus 1 hat. And now this matrix u1 over here is a unitary matrix by construction, right? This is unitary. Great. And now what can I say about A of u1? So let's look at A of u1. So A of U1 is going to be what? A of the matrix over here, U1, is going to be U1, and then a lambda, and then beneath that lambda there's going to be all zeros. There's going to be some non-zero vector over here called that non-zero vector A, 
And then there's gonna be a vector uh, matrix, an n minus one by n minus one matrix over here, n minus one by n minus one thing over here, B, right? Okay, excellent. Of course, if I look at the first column of A, if I do row dot column, I'm gonna get this row dot column over here. And so that will, the first, if I look at the first row over here, the first column over here, that is basically just saying what? That's just saying that A of U1 is gonna be lambda U1. So in other words, since U hat is an eigenvector, I know that that's the first column of my matrix U1. So I'm gonna get a column over here of a lambda, then all zeros below it. And then to the right of the lambda in the first row, there's gonna be some unknown vector over here, A, and below it's gonna be an n minus one by n minus one. And so now, of course, I'm gonna apply the induction hypothesis to this uh, matrix B. So by hypothesis, by the induction hypothesis, we can write B as what? By induction hypothesis. B is gonna be equal to V T, I'll say T sub B, V star for V unitary and and what? And TB upper triangular. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna form a U2, form U2. Okay, and what's U2? It's gonna be an N by N, by N matrix that's unitary. It's gonna be a one up top over here, zeros below it. Some unknown vector over here, B. Well, I can put it over here as just A, some uh, just A over here, A, and then my matrix over here, um, just my matrix over here, V, like that, great. And now this U2 over here is also unitary because I've just replaced it over, actually I want A, I'm gonna choose A to be zero, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna make that A zero. That'll make my life a little bit easier, that will definitely make sure it's unitary. So over here where the A was, I'm gonna put a zero over there, so that's really a zero vector, okay? And that's a zero column vector transpose, right? Transpose. Okay, so in other words, that is just a row vector of zeros, that's a column vector of zeros, okay? Now this matrix is clearly unitary, right? So that's a unitary matrix. Great. And now I'm gonna form a unitary, my matrix U is gonna be what? My matrix U, define U, to be U1, U2, okay? And so now let's check and see what we get over here. So what can we say about this matrix over here, B? Well, I know that what can be said, now let's consider consider the transpose of this thing over here, U star, consider U star A U, okay? So what will U star A U B? This will be equal to of course, now U1 times U2 is gonna be what? The product of two unitary matrices is gonna be unitary, so this is unitary. That's great, unitary, okay? And so now what will this be? This is going to be U2, I'm gonna put the U2 star first, U2 star, and then U1 star, and then A, and then U1, and then U2. Now what is U1, what is A? A is U1, um, a over here is going to be a, U, oh, so what will A be? So I put the, if I put the U1 star over here, I know that U1 star, U1 star A U1 is going to be this matrix over here. So this is going to be U2 star, and then this matrix over here, lambda, zero, the vector A, and then over here, the vector B, U2. Now what's gonna happen over here? Well, I have, this U2 has a one as an E1 hat in the first row and column over here, so that's gonna take it and turn into what? That's gonna take it and turn into lambda one. Lambda, zeros below. So other vector over here, which we don't know, let's call it B, some unknown vector, doesn't really matter to us so much. And then what's gonna be down over here? What's down over here? Well, U2 star U2, the V star, the V star B V star, V star B V star, over here is gonna be a TB, so it's gonna be a TB. And now this matrix over here is upper triangular, right? So this is an upper triangular matrix. Call this matrix over here, I'm gonna call this matrix over here just my T. And what have we just shown over here? We've just shown therefore that A is gonna be what? A is going to be equal to U T 
U star, and that completes our induction of Schur's lemma. So any n by n matrix with complex entries can be written as a unitary matrix, an upper triangular matrix, then the conjugate transpose of the adjoint of that unitary matrix. And so this upper triangular factorization holds in generality, whereas for diagonalizable matrices, diagonalizable matrices only hold in the case when the n by n matrix has distinct eigenvalues that correspond to a, a distinct uh, linearly independent eigenvectors, right? So the Schur lemma, the Schur factorization holds for a much wider collection, holds for all matrices, and at the expense of putting an upper triangular matrix in the similarity structure with unitary matrices on either side. So at the expense of an upper triangular matrix, I can get a unitary factorization, a unitary similarity out of any n by n matrix. Thank you very much.